Welcome back to the channel everybody. Uh, it's time to find out if the machining I did on the production bowl gears yesterday is going to make them fit in X231's prototype case any better. I've got the carrier placed back where it needs to be, axles in, and this bowl gear is just loose on the splines. So we'll slide it on a little bit here, take the nut, and I'll start it on, run it down, see if it improves our fit at all. Um, two major um, questions I have. A, is the bull gear now going to tighten on the splines and not contact the case? And if that is so, the other question is, what is my clearance between my carrier bolts and that bull gear going to be? So just run this down as tight as I can get it by hand, which they don't really move much more. I can tell I have more threads exposed, so I know the bull gear is further on the shaft than it was. Just do a quick rotation here. I can tell you it's already turning a lot freer than it did. No signs of scraping. Free wheels pretty nicely. That's at least one revolution, so I'm pretty sure we have our clearance issue resolved here. Now we'll look at the bolts on the ring gear. And honestly, we are darn near eighth of an inch and on a even on a production 445 they don't get any further away than that that's pretty good and I even like just the light a little bit I even like how the bull gear and bull pinion are pretty much in perfect mesh with one another so I'm not too far into that bearing race and I'm not too far out into these ring gear bolts and it doesn't hit the case guys I think we have success now to see about the other side. So I'll start by placing the bull gear inside the housing. It's pretty much the same process as the other side, only there is a little bit more room over here because that ring gear and differential carrier is not directly in front of this gear like it is on the left side. Still, I gotta get the gear in first because if the axle shaft was already in place, I'd never be able to clear the splined, the splined end of that. And now the axle can go in. Now, to do the same clearance check on this side, start the big nut, run it up there, and this side we only need to see if we're going to contact the case. Just tighten that nut by hand again, because once, once you get those tightened by hand, they don't really move any more uh, farther in when you put a wrench on them and really give them the torque. So. So far so good. Wheels around just nice. So the machining did the trick. Never had to grind on the case, never had to blast all that grit around in here. No touch up needed. Really happy how this stuff fits. So what I'm doing now is just temporarily mounting a wheel hub on each axle. Reason being that's going to provide me with a means of holding the axle from rotating while that uh, bull gear nut is tightened down. So the final step now before I can tighten those bull gears down is to put the fold over locks underneath the bull gear nuts and they have these uh, teeth that go around on the inside and what they do is they grab into the splines that are on the face of the bull gear. They're kind of tough to get centered up. You want to make sure that they're uh, 
fitted properly before you run the nut completely down against them. Get it close. And there, I can feel that it's the teeth are engaged. So now I can take that large three inch socket, tighten both of these in. Ready? Okay, so with the bull gear nuts fully tightened down, the last thing I need to do is bend these fold over locks to make the installations absolutely permanent. And you know what, guys? I think I'm just going to hold off on that for a while yet. I believe everything in here is uh, finally right. It's where it should be. But just in case, I'm going to finish uh, putting all the parts in this rear end before I go over and fold those down. That's probably going to be the very last step. Um, call me overly cautious, but as you've seen with these axles and bull gears, Sometimes it takes several attempts to get everything right. I mean, considering the amount of work it took just to put the axles and bull gears in this thing, I really didn't think I was going to have that much trouble with them, but it all started with finding the uh, one original prototype axle that had the splines all uh, wore out, so then I had to go and cut down this uh, production 445 one to fit because the bearing locations were all different. And then having the uh, production bull gears contacting the inside of the prototype case and pulling them back out and then machining those down on the lathe uh, it was a, a whole lot of uh, taking apart and putting back together and trial and error, but um, it did come together pretty well. And it's kind of amazing considering of all the parts that are in the rear end right now, there's only three original pieces that were in here before. This axle and both of those bull gear nuts. Everything else in here it has been completely replaced. It's all production parts. But at the end of the day, I think all that uh, work was worth it. Um, just the work it took to get good spline fit between axles and gears. You can see now why that's so critical because of the very limited space that I have between some of these components in here. But you know what? Everything is fitting just like it should. These bull gears are meshing perfectly in line with the bull pinions. And this whole thing is just smooth and whisper quiet. I mean, I'm really, really happy with uh, how well this uh, back end has come together. I mean, this poor tractor has not had a rear end in this good of shape easily for decades. So I'm going to wrap the video up right here. Um, it's been a good day. Everything went together well. It's fitting properly. And you know what? I'm in a good mood. So I'm not going to uh, press my luck any further than I already have. Um, as always, everybody, thanks for watching. Hope to see you back again.